so for today's vlog, um, I, I thought I'd go over something uh, that's come up multiple times. Um, I thought I'd go over uh, defense spending and what uh, what the money could be spent on, right? Um, but before I do any of that, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Petri underscore Pilar um, or Pilar Petri on Twitter. Uh, the only 60 second podcast on the planet where you can get a man in a shemag holding an actual newspaper and telling you the news of the day in 240 stunning pixels. OPSEC drip with Pilar Petri. Uh, he has sponsored uh, this vlog series till the end of the month. Uh, if you decide you want to <laughs> sponsor this shit show as well, feel free to hit me up. Um, but I wanted to make sure I got that out. There will also be a subscribe button for his channel at the end card. Feel free to throw him a sub uh, to show him that his money was well spent. Um, but with that in mind, um, I have a, a beef. Because, okay, occasionally I throw things like this out there, right? Um, and they do okay, but like, uh, mostly I'm just shopping around ideas and trying to see which ones piss people off the most. Um, so the most recent example of this was my totally hypothetical 2028 20, 10-part campaign platform, or 10-point, I don't know. I, I haven't decided what I would call that, but, um, this is because I am, uh, I, I don't know how old people think I am, but I'm not nearly old enough to run for the presidency, um, and I probably wouldn't, like 99.9% .9 chance I wouldn't, but uh, if I did, uh, I would run on a platform similar to this, uh, which is end war on drugs, withdraw from countries which haven't attacked the US, end the Fed, abolish ATF, end tax, abolish CIA, end federal school mandates, Stop crop subsidies, divert funds to housing, pardon Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange, and more. Um, now, the ninth one is what's got um, people concerned. And the reason I brought that up is to sort of throw a mon monkey wrench in some of the proprietarian anarchist arguments. Because... The fact is that this government and this country have fucked people over hugely, um, especially with the banks and corporations they directly work with. So, uh, there's a huge homelessness problem, um, and <laughs> there are tons of homes, right? There, there are enough homes in the U.S. to house the homeless. There's enough land to build those homes. Um, but to be real specific... Uh, like, they probably, like, vast majority of them got fucked out of living in a house. And I, I want to impress upon people the reality of the situation, which is that, like, ultimately, when we're talking about, like, you know, uh, government money, it was stolen in the first place. Uh, stolen from the people. And, like... When I'm talking about funding housing with diverted funds, I'm talking about, like, throwing the funds that would have gone to the other sectors at X. Now, object two on this agenda is withdrawing from countries which haven't attacked the U.S., which is a super reasonable kind of politicky way of saying end the war on terror, because none of those countries attacked the U.S., there has never been a formal declaration of war, and um, the fact that the U.S. is still over there is all the evidence you need to know that it's for money, for territorial control, for regional occupation, for the state capitalist mechanism to give you two-day shipping, um, all of that shit, right? Um, but, like, <laughs> ultimately, uh, like... The U.S. government spends, like, $733 billion 
on defense spending this year alone. You, you know how much it's estimated by the Department of Housing and Urban Development that it would cost in order to completely end homelessness? $20 billion. You could completely end homelessness for $20 billion, right? So instead of ending homelessness, the U.S. government has chosen to bomb more homes, to kill more civilians, to put more people out of work, to destroy more, because that's what the U.S. government fucking does. So with that in mind, you could spend $20 billion. It was uh, $700 billion last year. Fiscal year 2020, the military budget was lower under Trump. That should tell you something. Um, you know, I'm, I, I have a piece coming out fucking pulling dandruff out of my hair. Um, I have a piece coming out where, um, I'm going over the fact that the U.S. will probably never get out of Afghanistan because of profit and power and shit. Um, I'll post that on, you know, all my social media and in my Discord and shit. But ultimately... Uh, that's that's basically all it is. It's for profit and power. Um, and the reason the U.S. government has maintained the war on terror uh, has been to maintain the boss role in the global hegemony. So ultimately, um, they're not going to get out of the Middle East. And this is all a pipe dream. Like, even if I did somehow ascend to the presidency... Uh, I wouldn't have the power to end the war on terror because the powers that should not be have rigged it in their favor and would find a way to make it happen, even if it was staging attacks. So, to be real clear and extremely specific, um, the war on terror is a massive money sink, and it hurts a large amount of innocent people, and it costs, like, you know... 15 times what it would cost to end homelessness domestically. Instead of taking care of people here, instead of providing for the public welfare here, the U.S. is making enemies abroad. This is a mistake. So, um, I, I, I went over that in replies to my tweet. And I went over the fact that, like, you could even throw on ending hunger, right? Uh, because it's like 200 billion to end hunger. You know, and you want to you want to add on top of that, you know how Biden lied and broke his promise not only to get out of Afghanistan because he's keeping a bunch of private troops there, um which is not US out of Afghanistan, it's just a change in management of US troops in Afghanistan. Um to a much less accountable source, might I add. I'm digressing. Uh but he also broke his promise about $2000 checks. And those $2,000 checks uh, were part of the latest stimulus spending. Uh, you know how much uh, the, the direct deposit checks cost in total? $400 billion. So let's see. $400 plus $200 billion equals $600 billion, plus that twenty is six twenty. So you still have like nearly a, a $100 billion left after that just from cutting defense spending to countries that have not attacked the U.S. That's magic to a lot of people's ears, because they're not thinking about that. They're not thinking about how much money goes to devastating foreign countries. They don't give a shit. Um, so ultimately, when it comes down to it, uh, I think that the U.S. government not only owes the people it stole from a huge apology, which, you know diverting funds would be a big start in that regard to the people they stole it from, to the people they fucked over and created a massive poverty class, a big-ass warning sign on public streets that says, this could be you if you step out of the status quo. Um, you know, they fucked people over, and this could be the start of an apology tour. You know? Um, it could be the start of the U.S. government admitting that they did things that were wrong and help the wrong people um and it could be the start of a beautiful new future where people got to you know 
exist um, at their own merits and not be prosecuted for victimless crimes. You know, I didn't include all the stuff I would do. This is just general plans. If the president in this fantasy world that I'm crafting for a tweet has any power, which the most like likelihood is that even if I did get in, um, they would wrest all the power from me. Like even presidents with good intentions, um, presidential candidates with good intentions are probably blocked out of the race due to like, you know, effectively, like physically blocked out of the race due to the fact that uh, the machine doesn't like them. You know, but if, if a president with good intentions somehow does get in, somehow does act corrupt enough and become that much of a chameleon to get in, um, then, you know, they'll probably still be vastly limited in power. And the scope of their authority will be determined by the shadow government of the, you know, Federal Reserve Monopoly, of the Bilderberg Group, of the Trilateral Commission. Um, so the fact of the matter is that... The um, U.S. machine would grind on anyway. But in a fantasy kingdom where I got to make that sort of decision, which all of these things are federally doable. I kept my list of things that the executive could definitely ha have an effect on if the system works, which it doesn't. This is all bullshit. I'm tweeting from an account with a Sonic the Hedgehog banner picture and me with my dumbass smirk on it. This isn't real. But... I thought I I thought I'd bring that into perspective because the like there is enough in the defense budget which is really an offense budget um to literally provide another round of like $2000 checks this time Biden could actually keep his promise this time um houses for the homeless and ending hunger according to estimates by like serious institutions. You can look this up. Um, so the reason I brought that up wasn't to say government spending is great. The reason I brought that up wasn't to say that, you know, welfare is a good thing. The reason I brought that up was to try and throw a little wrench in people's perceptions, because this money was stolen from the U.S. people in the first place. And much more than this, a huge amount more than this, especially if you consider the inflation uh, that, 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 like, will increase the debt every single time it happens. Look up The Greatest Scam in the History of Mankind by Mike Maloney to learn more about that. But, like, this was just my way of seeing who was actually interested in, you know, justice. Because I think the U.S. people are owed their money back. And I think that would end homelessness, you know? I think that would solve most economic crises. And I think if we did that, uh, <laughs> the U.S. might actually start to thrive for once. But the powers that should not be don't want the U.S. to thrive. They want us sick. They want us to lose. Because then they can always pick up the pieces after we lose, after they have broken us, and as Harry Brown said, hand us a crutch and tell us without them we wouldn't be getting around so good. That's what the government does. The government is an angry mob boss demanding his protection pay. And most of the time he doesn't even talk to you in person. He sends one of his goons. So I just thought I'd bring this up. Because uh, the state is a manifestly corrupt and criminal institution. And it's kind of fun sometimes to just use their own stuff to prove that. Anyway, this unhinged rant was brought to you by a guy who should probably edit this, but probably won't. Um, so with that in mind, if you uh, decide you want to subscribe to my channel, it'll be right there. His channel will be right there. That's Opsec Drip on, uh, on YouTube and Pilar Petri or... Petri underscore Pilar on Twitter, and you can find 60-second uh, bites of news every day. With that, smash the state.